Hi, this is um, kind of a little documenting video of the tools that I use and how I use them for making my reads. Um, I never had any lessons. I mainly learned from videos and different documents. Um, and I've watched a few people make some reads. Uh, generally speaking, most of the reads I, pl I make play well, <coughs> but not great. I haven't made a lot of great reads yet. But this will be interesting for a brand new beginner to see, or if you're really experienced in making reads, maybe you can point out some things that uh, um, I don't have or I'm not using certain things um, correctly. So anyhow, I, I use this a lot. This is a jeweler's plate I bought on eBay. Just a hunk of heavy steel. Um, but I use that for the flat surface for my uh, sanding. Um, sometimes I use it uh, for like an anvil purpose if I'm trying to uh, um, make a staple. I also roll. Uh, most of the, the reeds I make I roll. Um, and uh, these are some copper ones. And I, I use this for rolling on it, so very handy, wasn't that expensive. Um, here you can tell my great skills as a carpenter. <laughs> uh, keep organizing, uh, a way to keep uh, my reeds organized. Um, if I'm making a staple out of copper, um, it's usually thick enough and stick stiff enough that I have to anneal it. Um, so I, I use this when I do that. And I usually throw it in the water. Um, these are some sharpening stones I use. The uh, I need somebody to show me how to um, sharpen a in in kennel um, gouge. Uh, I think I've been doing it right, but um, there's not a lot of information out there. This happened to come from uh, the Tim Britton Reed Kit. Um, and I use this for for sharpening some of the other knives I use, although I, don't, I end up not using this that much. <laughs> I used to have this in a metal box, um, but I saw these wood boxes, and uh, there's a real good deal at um, Harbor Freight, Freight Harbor. Um, it's kind of cheaply built, but um, I think it looks pretty cool closes up like that. Um, use this so I can see myself filming myself. Um, I think this was another eBay purchase and I use this pretty regularly for the final um, moments of um, scraping. Uh, when I'm trying to get uh, you know really um, even thickness on both uh, both reed slips uh, when I'm sanding and my old eyes can't do it anymore I'm not sure if my younger eyes could but this is kind of cool it's got a light that on here that's kind of useless it's got two lenses I think this was like um, maybe 14 bucks or something like that I never had one of these before, but someone suggested getting it. It's um, a circle template, and I use it for when I'm determining, uh, you know, what um, what size uh, cane I want to use, or if I want to document what I'm using so I know what I did. Um, let's see hammers. I sometimes use this on the uh, on the staple to help flatten it. Uh, usually, I do most of the work with a, a set of pliers. Sometimes this comes in handy. Um, I haven't used this much recently, so I'm not sure if that's worthwhile for anything. Um, this is um, they call it hemp, but it's actually a, uh, I think it's a nylon. Um, 
And what you do with that is, I guess you can use this um, uh, dry for um, uh, drone joints and stuff like that. Um, but if you want to have something that seals in a, in a seat, I have these pieces of, um, it's like tar wax. It's called cobbler's wax. And um, so you draw that across the, uh, the wax and it makes for a nice sticky, sealy kind of um, thread. Um, I used to use this for winding uh, the slips onto the staple. Uh, but it was a fair amount of work and a little messy. And then um, I came across this one piper who used this stuff. And now I use mostly this stuff for winding. And it's, um, let me see if I remember what it's called. It's uh, braided nylon that's waxed. And so it has a little bit of a, a spring to it, not much. Um, but it, it holds itself in place really well. Uh, when I wind the reeds, there the slips on to the staple. Uh, has a nice, looks like a nice comfortable grab of this um, cane that goes on the staple. Um, and it's easy to start with just a simple um, knot. And then when you're done, you spin it um, on the winder between your two fingers, uh, the heat um, kind of seals everything in. Prior to that, I, I used to use this stuff. I think it's called Naltex or something like that. And it came in the Tim Britton kit. Um, I think it's kind of ugly and kind of coarse, so I, I don't use that that much anymore. Um, uh, Teflon tape. Um, I hardly ever use this. Uh, if I'm in some sort of situation where I have a staple that um, just barely fits into um, a, a drone hole or something like that, I may use this um, as instead of this stuff or, or the tape. Um, it's kind of messy. It, it f feathers stuff off. I don't know. don't like it. This is just a black version of the, the white Nile text. I don't use it that much. Um, this is a great tool. I mean, it's a, a big honk and file. Uh, I got it at a used tool store for the price used to be on here, two dollars. And I use that for rolling the staples. Uh, it does a really good job. Um, put some weight weight here in this hand. This hand roll back and forth, and voila, you turn. Um, uh, crummy looking uh, rolled copper into nice uh, tubing. Um, I was experimenting with some other kinds of thread. Uh, turns out I, I end up not using this. Some people suggest using floss, so I threw it in here, but I never use this. Um, I think this is just a cotton fiber. Um, actually, this may be hemp. In fact, I think I might have gotten this from Ted Anderson. Not sure about that, but um, I mainly use this to uh, bind the um, the slips together uh, before I put it on the staple. Um, it's nice and soft and gentle on the edges. Um, helps keep from preventing um, cracks and stuff. And I used to use just something like like this. Actually, I started using. Um, this stuff, uh, but I think this stuff's a little bit better. And then I saw another guy who just used um, tape. Just, just put like electrician's tape around, or some people use masking tape. Um, every now and then, you pull the tape off, and the reed will split. And so what I do now, because when I used to use um, the thread stuff, I would um, run it around, and then I take a little bit of that um, cobbler's wax and um, kind of press the end into the reed to keep the um, the string in place. Well, now what I do is I um, I wind this around um, the uh, 
the very end by the lips and then down towards the beginning of the tail. And then I put some tape around that to hold it in place. And it just it's a lot easier. And later on I use that same tape in the process of making the reed. Um, <coughs> this seems like it's just too big for the job, but I use this for cutting my, um, my brass and my copper. Um, I think this was kind of on the expensive side, like around 30 bucks. And, um, but it cuts very well, very precisely. Um, you know, I usually have to file a little bit when I'm done, but not that much. So it's amazing for such a big, coarse looking cutting thing. Um, in um, Jeff Wolf's um, MPU, MPU? Yeah, video on reed making, um, he uses uh, one of these guys. So I thought, oh God, if he uses that. But the problem with this, um, this is kind of spring loaded. Yeah, I can almost do that one handed. So I, um, you know, I can go ahead and cut my, my stuff, lock it off, and I'm done. On this, I don't know how Jeff does it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice shears, but my fingers don't have the strength to uh, open and close this very easily, so I invariably have to. So that was kind of a waste of money for me. Um, some nail lacquer. Uh, I have not used this that much, um, but sometimes you'll end up with a little leak on the edge edges or in the binding. Um, uh, but I almost never have that. Um, but I have used this, I think, once or twice. Use this all the time. Um, it's just a handheld uh, vise that. Um, Uh, it's made by Schroeder, but I, I used to have a uh, um, an old one that I bought on eBay for like ten bucks, and it worked pretty good. But you can uh, I make my own mandrels for the most part for for, um, for holding the um, the staples in place. Sometimes I use the ones I make for forming the staples, but other times um, I'll use the makers' uh, mandrels, and I'll show you that. But you can put your uh, uh, put your reed on there, and I have different sizes. This one's actually a little bit too big for this, and I put it on a vise here, and right here, we we'll just do it. And as you can. Do the heat thing for sealing, or you can uh, uh, wind it. It's pretty handy. The one thing I don't like is this chuck um, tends to get loose at least once every time I wind something, particularly when I'm pulling tight on the uh, on the winding string. Oh, vice! I use that a lot. I can't imagine doing it without having a vice. Uh, this should be up here as well. Um, I use this uh, little, I don't know what that's called, it's a little hacksaw uh, for cutting the um, the cane primarily. Occasionally I've used it for cutting down staples that were, uh, that were too long. Don't use that mirror for me. Alright, uh, lots of pens and pencils. Um, I have found one of the best things are these fine point sharpies. Um, and I use that for marking off the uh, slip for when I um, determine uh, the midpoint where the tail should be and how much I should pre-scrape for, um, for the final scrape. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll also use a pencil. I think somewhere in here I actually have a, like a machinist kind of pencil. But um, I use this most of the time. Uh, I also have this, um, I think it's a carbide tip um, scribe uh, for when I'm cutting the, um, 
the copper and brass for either staples or for bridles. Um, makes a nice fine sharp line. Uh, already talked about the wax. Um, I've got a, some strap leather uh, that sometimes I'll use when I'm trying to sharpen um, either the, um, the gouges or one of the knives. And I've got three different grades of uh, wax for that. I barely know what I'm doing with that. Um, always have a good supply of this stuff, super glue. Um, it, um, it'll fix a crack in a reed and the reed will behave just like the crack was never there. Although I don't like that, I'm not sure if I totally believe what I just said there. Uh, I don't know what this is doing in here because I don't use that. Uh, someone talked about using something, well that's more crazy glue. Um, wax, beeswax. Uh, sometimes I'll use this for um, waxing um, some of these threads. Um, Sometimes I'll use it if, if I have a little bit of a leak on the sides. I shouldn't have that leak, but I can you know, rub a little bit of wax in there, and um, sometimes that takes care of, care of it. Uh, this is the best place for sandpaper, I guess. I, I got a supply of sandpaper over there. Look, look how messy it is. Fire hazard. Um, I use... Uh, um, 150 for the beginning of all my sanding stuff and then I usually progress to uh, 220 paper and sometimes on the inside of the slips I'll um, then go to 320 and then I was in kick for a while for you know if I could just get almost like a mirror polish on it so I have stuff that goes all the way up to like 2000 don't do that anymore Sometimes um, I'll get excited about uh, making a staple that um, uh, looks like it's a manufactured piece of tubing that you could brush your teeth looking into. And, and that's when I'll, I'll stick it on the, uh, the drill here and progress through the different um, sandpapers and then, um, and then polish it off at the end with some different grades of, uh, of wax. Pliers. Um, some of this stuff came from the uh, Tim Britton kit. Uh, some I had uh, previously, but in any case, um, I use this for trimming up the um, the bridles as I'm making them. I use this. I wish I knew the names of these things, but for uh, rounding the corners of the eye or bringing the eye to a point on the staple. Um, yeah. Um, for squeezing um, the staple down to a point, uh, I use this one. And I use this one for um, helping me form the, uh, the bridle. I usually um, pre curve the bridle on, um, on a piece of cane. You know, I take a strip of copper and and pull it across the um, the cane that I use the slip for, so that's going to be a, a good match for um, for the diameter here. And then I um, I take this pliers, put it up as close as I can to the the cane, and I I bend it there so I get kind of like the same angle, and um, I kind of go from there. Okay, moving along. I got into uh, doing wire bridles for a while um, because they look cool. <laughs> and I think if you've made the reed very well, um, it's, it's a nice, really fine uh, control of changing the reed, but it doesn't seem to work over big changes of, of humidity. And so I've kind of fallen away from using this stuff and I'm just using bridles. And I, I use tape. I use tape a lot. Um, I will use it to um, hold the slip down onto um, the sanding block for, for cutting it and pre-scraping it. 
I'll use it for holding um, the uh, the winding that I used that holds the slips together before I um, put it on the staple. And um, I'll use it uh, once I've wound it. I'll, um, I'll at one point, actually that's not my read. <laughs> that's Brad's read. I will um, put it around here to uh, protect it from the sandpaper when I, uh, I put a little bit of a um, an angle to this thing for when um, for adjusting purposes and that way I can sand this without hurting that and then what I do is I take the tape off again and I put it up a little bit further like right below where the, the root of this uh, scrape is and um, wrap that around and then I can sand with the abandon without worrying about affecting um, this, the, the back of the reed here and um, or cutting in or scraping up with this uh, uh, binding material. Uh, this came in Tim Britton's kit. Oh, it's getting scratched up. Um, I use this for determining um, two different things. One is, uh, am I am I am I close to getting to where I want to be from for the scrape to get the right tone and everything? Or if I'm working on a slip and I'm shaving it down or sanding it down, um, I can check um, the thickness of it. Usually, I, these days, well, when I do, to start with the Tim Britton stuff, I would get it down to about point, <coughs> point oh, three five inches, and now I I let it sit around four five to five oh, do it a little bit thicker. Um, I like to deal on everything in metrics. And this is not metric. <laughs> so I looked everywhere to try and get something like this in, um, in metric that would have, I think these are called anvils or points, and they, they both have to be rounded or pointed so that you can you know, get into places to measure valid thickness. So I found this, and I think I've used it once or twice. It's uh, a cheaper thing, but it's I don't know, it's just, I don't use it. It's odd. <laughs> it's not a good quality, so I just live with um, the um, the regular uh, units as opposed to metric when it comes to that particular dimension. Okay, these are sanding cylinders that came out of the um, Tim Britton kit, so I can use anything from 35 millimeters to about 50, 58, yeah, 58 millimeters. Uh, put the sandpaper over there and, um, you know, sand. Once I've uh, ground stuff or gouge stuff, um, at one point some people were saying, oh, you, that's not big enough. You need to have 70 millimeters. So I bought a 70 millimeter sanding block. Um, these other marks are here is um, when I'm done with the sanding and I'm ready to um, cut the uh, uh, the slip in half. I'll have it taped on here and I rock back and forth and after a while it does that. Uh, somebody who posted on, uh, on Facebook made a cool tool. I tried to do it for determining uh, sizes um, but uh, my metal skills are slightly worse than my wood skills and so I that never worked out. <laughs> have a couple mandrels, uh, both made by Brad Angus. Pretty nice looking. I don't know why I have this ugly tape on here. But this is the mandrel for the D channer and this is the mandrel for the um, for the B. Uh, I use this all the time. Uh, it's a nice great little tool. It's digital. Um, and you can do uh, millimeters, inches, fractions, um, sometimes do conversions on this. Um, it, it does ID, but not the greatest, but in terms of uh, thickness um, or length, uh, I use it all the time. 
I also use this um, Starrett, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, a uh, rule. It's steel. It, it'll last you forever. Um, and it has, uh, I primarily do stuff in metrics. So on a good seeing day, I can use that side. If I'm not seeing as well, I can use that side. I got this, this is a, a template for um, the tails and the cutting of, um, of a reed. And I do use this uh, occasionally. Sometimes I'll just go with a straight edge, but when I use boat tails like this, uh, it, um, I think the reeds tend to crack less when I'm, uh, when I'm winding them. I got that through um, MPU. Uh, this is again an, another fine example of my terrible woodworking skills. But um, when you uh, roll your own staple, you, you cut a blank, lay it on top of there, um, and I grab a mandrel and I, I put this on top of that and I grab one of the hammers, boom, 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 and it starts the, um, the process of making forming the uh, the mandrel or the um, staple uh, I use this a lot uh, I, got, I got it on the internet I can't remember who sells it uh, although his initials must be KM <laughs> but it's a uh, Teflon it's been bonded on to um, a car piece of wood and what this is good for is you uh, put your sandpaper on here, put this on there like that, and then you can just nice uniform pressure all the way across. It's a nice way to get nice uniform thickness. It's a little tricky in that um, it gets to be slippery, and so what you have to do is you, you wet it, you dry it, you put it on there, you do your sanding, and then uh, repeat. Okay, so I paid attention on this one, <laughs> and it's a little bit better. Uh, I've never worked with hardwood before, uh, but I made this. This is my gouging block, and it's, uh, God, I didn't forget the name of the wood, but it's, uh, it's really hardwood. Rosewood, maybe? Uh, and I'd seen somebody else do something like this, so I bought a little gauge and, um, and glued that in there. So I use that occasionally. Um, but in terms of this for the gouging, um, it, it works really, really good. And these are an assortment of um, mandrels. A couple of these things. Uh, these came out of the um, uh, Tim Britton kit, these two right here. And then I got some rod steel and or some nails to hook up something so I can uh, spin it here and I've done different things there and see you can tell that used to be a nail um, and the way I made these things is uh, you can see the mess over here I have, a, I have a drill press I'll put it in the drill press and then I'll, I'll file it down measure it file it down measure it and eventually um, when I get the dimensions I like I go through the different sandpapers and stuff to make it be uh, more uniform. My knives and files. Um, this came in the Tim Britton kit uh, for making, um, for cutting tubing. Um, I don't do that many tubing reeds. For some reason my tubing reeds don't turn out that well, but my rolled ones do. So there's probably something to be learned about that. It's also in the um, Tim Britton kit. It's a reamer. I use this all the time when I'm doing a staple for getting uh, rid of the burrs at the uh, at the end of the staple. <laughs> that reminds me. Uh, I don't have any shop air, but I have this for blowing the sawdust away. And when I'm working uh, with cane stuff. Um, I have uh, um, masks 
that I use. Okay. I got this fancy Japanese um, knife that's um, kind of dull and pitted right now. And um, it's not good for anything except cutting stuff right now. I mean, I'm sure it's really good for a lot of different things, but I don't know how to use it. So I'll, I'll use that for cutting tape and string and stuff. Uh, I've got um, several different kinds of files that I use for um, mainly on the staple and also cleaning up the, the bridles before I, I bend them. Um, I have this little kit of little files. I use this a lot for um, cleaning up the eye or the end of a staple. Um, the different shapes really help. I even um, even helps me form the eye a little bit better. I was definitely afraid of some of these knives, so I got this really cool um, thumb guard. So you can you know, like pull knives into it, but um, after a while, um, it just kind of gets in the way. And uh, I learned different ways of doing stuff without having to drag uh, a knife into your, your thumb. Um, use this a whole lot. Um, I use it for um, for splitting the cane um, after it's been um, gouged and sanded. I use it for um, cutting down the um, the tail um, and for pre-gouging. When I have it taped onto uh, those sanding blocks, I'll, I'll pre-gouge. Uh, and I got a nice set or supply of um, sharp um, blades to go with it that I change regularly. Um, again, I forget which... Well, that blade looks messed up. Maybe it's just glue in there. Any case, so this is a scalpel. comes with the different blades. This is really good. Well, occasionally I'll use it for cutting this stuff. Um, I grab the near sharp thing, but um, see that the because the curved blade here, you know, you can get pretty precise with um, like when you're scraping and you want to keep the the center section kind of thick. You can get in here and and just do some nice little scraping in in small areas, and so it's it's really handy for that. That wasn't a real scrape. That was just a demo move. Uh, gouges. Um, I got two from Tim Britton, the number four and number six. He uses the number six for tone chambers and gouging out the tail. I don't do that anymore, so I don't use the six. So what I'll do is I'll take this one, and it's number three, and I'll set it up on the block, and I'll come in here and I'll cut this down to the point where, um, I'm hitting new uh, new pith all over, so it'll be um, it's relatively flat, but it it cuts through it like butter, really nice. And then I'll go with the uh, the number four, and go down the center and go down the sides and start to form the um, the final thickness that I want, probably down to uh, sixty thousandths of an inch um, before I start. Um, uh, sanding for the final amount. Uh, is there anything else in here? Yes. I used this a lot in the beginning. I may use it some more. It's another uh, good scraping device. I think cabinet makers use these things. But there's a way to sharpen this and I have not really learned how to do that. But when it's a nice sharp edge. It's another one of those things where you can kind of pick and choose, you know, the kind of area that you want to scrape. That's it. Oh, I also document stuff. <laughs>